Tell it back in. Smooth, say hi. Hi, honey. Say hi, Pembroke. Say, Smooth, say thank you for your service. Give a salute. Salute. Here we nice go. Good job, Anthony. Thanks, brother. Give me another salute. Another salute, pal. Another salute. Salute. There you go. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Happy healthy to everybody today. Remember our guys overseas.
Welcome to our 2014 Memorial Day ceremony. Thanks for coming. First, we're gonna start out with a moment of silence. Uh, there were several citizens in Pembroke that passed away last year that had served the town. Uh, Merton, Bud, Rob, and Grant of the Pembroke Fire Department, an advisory committee. Uh, William Bill Eisenberg, Pembroke Watershed Association. John Henry Willis, Senior, Department of Public Works. To do the invocation, Dana Bean, dad of PSC Matthew A. Bean, United States Army, Iraq, and a member of the North River Community Church. Dana? Father, thank you for parting the clouds and keeping us dry. We pray that you'll be with us today while we remember those that have fallen from our local community and across the nation. And we thank those that are up on the platform and around us that serve us and to help protect the freedoms that you've granted us. Help us to move back to being one nation under God. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance, Frank Costa, United States Army, Air Corps, World War II. Uh, 54 years and counting, might even be more than that, member of the Town Memorial Committee and the VFW. He's gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and lead us into the National Anthem. I'll bring your units to attention, please, and present arms. After the Pledge of Allegiance, the Civil Lake March and Band will play the... Ah, Pembroke High School. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the Pembroke High School Band. You all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. The governor's proclamation will be read by our state representative in general court, Josh Cutler. Thank you. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. His Excellency Governor Deval L. Patrick. Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country's long history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Deval L. Patrick, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 26, 2014 to be Memorial Day and urge all of the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observation. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston the first day of May in the year 2014 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 237th, by His Excellency Governor Deval L. Patrick and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Representing the Selectmen, Chairman of the Board of Pembroke Selectmen, Daniel Trabuco. Thank you, Linda. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen and the Town of Pembroke, I thank the Town Memorial Committee and all those who have assisted in the preparations for this Memorial Day observance. Welcome to all of you assembled here on these grounds under the shadows of the monuments which honor Pembroke servicemen and women. Thank you for your cognizance of the importance for all of us to recognize our veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice for America's liberty. Our war dead hold a profound place in our hearts, minds, and emotions. Every one of us has been touched in some way by a veteran who has died for our country. On this day, we remember our fallen friends, relatives, and fellow citizens. The town of Pembroke has seen many veterans fall in service of their country, with the most recent being Matthew Bean, Brian McPhillips, and Jesse Crudup. I see their Gold Star families in the, and in the audience today. 
and I offer them my condolences for their losses and my thanks for raising such fine young men who admirably represented our town and our nation. It's difficult for me to know and to understand how you, as parents, must feel. The profound anguish of losing a son, along with the beaming pride of how well your son served and sacrificed for our country. Like all of you assembled here, I too have been affected by the loss of one of our fallen soldiers. My childhood friend, Eddie Gargano, was killed in action in Beirut. I remember how we as boys played war using sticks as guns, dividing up teams, and using what we knew of military strategy to win the game. Eddie was always the best at this. Growing up, his one wish was to become a Marine. He did this. And in 1983, successfully took part in the invasion of Grenada. Shortly afterward, he was offered, he was ordered to Beirut, Lebanon. His story is best told by a fellow Marine comrade who wrote this, and I quote, it was January 1984, and a young corporal had just taken my place in a working party to the US Embassy in Beirut. I fell back on my rack, exhausted after two trips to the embassy, filling sandbags and running four-hour patrols at night. My sleep was fitful, as it always was in the route. I awoke to the news that the young corporal, my friend, Eddie Gargano, had been killed in an ambush at the landing zone near the embassy. I walked outside, screaming, crying, off and on, cursing the Shoof Mountains in the distance and the cowardly terrorists who inhabited them. As an NCO, he didn't have to go. As a Marine NCO, he did. The ultimate sacrifice? Not many of us know what that means, really. I do. I say a silent prayer to God and bless my friend Eddie for allowing my family and I to live and breathe free in America. Thanks, Eddie. Semper Fi, unquote. If you ever find yourself in Eddie's hometown of Quincy, stop by his memorial stone in front of Snug Harbor Elementary School. We here in Pembroke have our own memorial stones on this town memorial green on which we stand, celebrating our veterans of every branch of the military. And I ask all of you here today to stop by, salute, say thank you, and most of all, remember the sacrifices made by those brave men. It's been an honor to represent the town of Pembroke on this Memorial Day. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you. We'll now have a musical selection from our Pembroke High School band, and they're going to play the um, service song. So I'd like you to, if you're in the Marines or in Navy or Air Force, Coast Guard, um, please acknowledge that. We want to make sure that everyone knows that you served your country.
We now have our traditional reading of Freedom is Not Free by Anthony O'Brien Sr., Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Navy SEALs. Thanks, Linda. And on behalf of all the veterans, I'd like to expend, extend a special thanks to the town staff for the great job they did putting together uh, today's remembrance, as well as to uh, all of our bands that provide the inspiring music. Um, the Massachusetts 22nd Dynamite uh, Civil War reenactors, you do a super duper job all the time. And of course our public safety officials uh, today being here in, in uniform and with our color guards. Uh, can't thank you enough. And last but not least, our, uh, our scouts doing a, a great, great job. Thanks to everyone. And also, and also uh, a special heartfelt thanks to our, uh, our three most recent Gold Star families. Uh, from the current conflict over in the Middle East. Appreciate Linda asking me to read this poem. It's by Kelly Strong, an officer of the United States Coast Guard. It's entitled, Freedom Isn't Free. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud, with hair cut square and eyes alert, he stood out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears. How many pilots' planes shot down, how many foxholes were soldiers' graves. No freedom is not free. I heard the taps, excuse me, I heard the sound of taps one night. When everything was still, I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen. When a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, of the mothers and the wives of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No freedom isn't free. God bless. <laughs> Musical selection. The National Emblem March from the Brockton Cosmo Legion Band under the direction of Ed Myers.
The next sequence is all going to kind of happen together. Um, I'm going to call forward. Um, I need two people for World War I monument in Iraq, and Revolutionary War in 1812. Um, they're all right currently over in this monument right here. Uh, I need World War II, Vietnam, the Civil War ladies, World War II, and Korea. There should be a uh, wreath right down here in front of me. We're going to decorate the monuments. The commander of the American Legion, Donald Cronin, is going to read all of the names and we'll have a volley from our Civil War group at, e at the end of each one. So you can proceed to decorate. Just one. And now I will turn it over to Commander Gerwin. The following uh, honor roll is for Civil War veterans. Nathaniel B. Bishop, Ansel F. Bonnie, Ansel W. Brown, Edwin Bosworth, Lucius E. Chandler, James T. Cummings, James B. Curtis, Robert H. Cornell, Charles C. Clark, Jacob Curtis, Marshall M. Chandler, George H. Ford, Alfred G. Howe, Alden Howard, John Jones, Calvin S. Mingown, Marcus M. Reed, Hiram F. Stevens, Henry T. Stevens, Abel O. Stetson, and George M. Witherall. World War I, Arthur B. Church, Harold R. Chute, Leonard R. Turner, World War II, Clarence D. Wainwright, Jr., Gordon B. Northup, Robert V. Carter, E. Everett Turner, Theodore White, Frederick Moorhart, and Arthur Mounts. North, uh, excuse me, Korea. K. Nelson Handy. Iraq. Brian McPhillips. Matthew A. Bean. And Jesse Crudup. Cosmo Band was playing tabs. Right.
Pembroke High School band will now play God Bless America. My remarks will be very short, and they're probably the same ones I said last year. I just want everyone to remember what this uh, ho it's not, a holiday is all about. It's not about Happy Memorial Day. It's about remembering the sacrifices that our men and women made all of these years, for many, many years. And that's what enables us to have this great weekend, long weekend of picnics and fairs and baseball games and everything else. And that's what I want you to remember. Uh, I want to thank my committee. And they're listed on the program. I have a great committee. It's the best one in Pembroke, by the way. But you don't have to tell the other committees that. But it's a really good committee. They work well together. Whatever we need, they do, and I really appreciate all that they do. Thank you so much. I just want to end with, we do have, starting at, at World War II, we started to put memorial poles around town, and I like to mention them because before I got involved with the committee, I never knew where they were, so I like people to know where they are. And I'm going to start out with um, Private Gordon Northrop, United States Army Air Corps. He actually has a bridge over on Route 3 and 139 just before you come to the Christmas tree shop. Lieutenant Robert Carter, United States Navy. He's right out here behind the church, his pole, First Church in Oldham. Major E. Everett Turner, United States Army Air Corps, Route 139 and 53. Lieutenant Clarence Wainwright, United States Army Air Corps, over on the corner of Taylor and Elm. Uh, WTC Frederick Moorhart, United States Navy, Oldham and Wampatuck Street. Tech fifth grade Arthur Mounts, United States Army, over at High and Forest Street. And Private Theodore White, United States Army, Mattachusett and Grove. The Korean Conflict, Private K. Nelson Handy, United States Army, Center in Queensbrook Road. We were fortunate not to have anyone in, in Vietnam. Iraq, Lieutenant Brian McPhillips, United States Marine Corps, Lake and Monroe Street, and PFC Matthew Bean, U.S. Army, Oldham and West Elm. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we have um, Reverend McCarthy from St. Thecla's will give the benediction, and then the musical selection of Stars and Stripes Forever from the Brockton Cosmo Legion Band. Father McCarthy. We gather together on this most solemn of days to pause and to remember 
to give thanks to the service of so many of our men and women to our country over the many years. We pray for all our men and women who are serving in the armed forces this day that their sacrifice to preserve and protect our nation may be blessed, that they may be protected and brought home safely. We pray for all our veterans. We give thanks to them for their service. We pray for all who are wounded, physically or emotionally, that they may receive the support and love they need to heal and rebuild their lives. We, play, we pray for the families and friends and loved ones, that they who have lost loved ones in the service of their country may know comfort and healing and consolation. We pray for all women, men, and children who are, suffer innocently from the effects of war. For those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, we gather here today to pause, to remember, and to give thanks. We pray that they may now rest in peace, that their families may know support and comfort and consolation. And lastly, we pray for peace, that all our soldiers may come home to their families safely, come back to our towns and communities. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and grant you his peace. Amen.
Thank you all for coming. I think that Pembroke does a wonderful job honoring and remembering their veterans on Veterans Day and those who made the ultimate sacrifice on Memorial Day. Thanks again for coming.